Hello, my name is Sam Felton and welcome to Expert Interviews here on Smash the Fat. For you today, I've got another chap that I met at Health Unplugged. It seems like this kind of past month has been people that I've connected with at Health Unplugged. Again, it's so important to go to these conferences face to face so you actually meet people. Um, but I went to this guy's talk um, on optimizing performance through the paleo diet and optimizing performance in my personal life is something that I, I very much like to look into. Um, and this guy is all the way from Sweden um, and his name is Jonas Berkfist. How are you doing Jonas? I'm fine Sam. Great to have you on and great to see the Swedish flag as well. And hey to all the Swedish people out there. Yeah, I'm all set with the Swedish flag in the background. I'm, I'm, I'm all honored to be on your podcast. It's going to be fun. I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, now, as I said, uh, we met, met at Health Unplugged and we got on like a house on fire. Um, and you know, we, we we chatted at the at the speakers' dinner for for quite a while about a lot of things, um, and it was absolutely fascinating. And I, I very much enjoyed your talk. Um, now, before we get into today's subject, which is that optimizing performance through the paleo diet, um, how exactly did you come into this field of study and come to the conclusions that you have? Uh, well, it started basically. Um, 13, 14 years ago. Uh, I studied physiology and, and pharmacology at the university here in, in Stockholm in Sweden. And, you know, that's all about school medicine. And uh, I sat in a restaurant, in a lunch restaurant with a friend of mine, and I talked about uh, uh, nutritional recommendations in the Western world. And he just said to me, you know, Jonas, that's all just politics, you know. It has no nothing to do, to do about health. It's just politics. This is the book you should read. And he gave me uh, a book from a Swedish researcher that had been on uh, in Indonesia and studying urban tribes and their health uh, and their physics. Uh, so I started reading this book and uh, I was so fascinated about the evolutionary perspective on, on human health and uh, on the human body. Uh, so I started to to read a lot about uh, this topic myself. Um, and um, besides that, I, I studied uh, physiotherapy and uh, I tried to just combine all these, uh, these facts together. Uh, and after university, I started my own business and um, I uh, tried to coach people uh, within the nutrition field, within the exercise field from an evolutionary perspective. And I've done that for well, approximately 10 years now. So that's the background. Fantastic. And and you've now become the biggest paleo educator in Sweden as well, which is quite a feat. Yes, yeah, so we have a training program uh, since 2008, uh, and we've educated uh, over 700 uh, students uh, within this field. So it's it's been, in, been an uh, amazing journey, basically. Fantastic. And, and people can find out more about that. Uh, in Swedish, or you can just hit Google Translate um, at your website, which is uh, jonasbergfist.se. That's J O N A S B E R G Q I S T dot S E. And also follow you on Twitter at MF underscore Jonas, J O N A S, as well. And were there any other websites that people should check you out on? We're actually, we're actually, <laughs> now that you're asking, we're actually launching our new website in uh, within a week, uh, so mid-December uh, 2015. It's going to be paleoinstitute.se. We're actually changing the name of the, uh, the company to Paleo Institute. So that's going to be an update. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Paleoinstitute.se. Um, so check that out in about a week. Um, and then you can check that all up. Will, will there be an English translation or just, just Swedish? Uh, in, S Swedish at start, but uh, we're actually planning to, do, to have it in English um, um, next year or so. 
fantastic and and you know google translate does kind of you know a half decent job of you know giving you the gist of what you're saying i think anyway like if you hit google translate on if you've got google chrome it's quite easy to translate a complete website by that yeah, um, yeah. But, hey, excellent um so optimizing performance through the paleo diet now you've worked with a lot of recreational exercises but a lot of elite athletes as well um, so when it comes to optimizing performance what do you have to think about in terms of diet well uh, first of all first of all I think it's very important to differ between the recreational uh, athletes and the uh, the elite athletes um, I haven't really uh, worked with elite athletes uh, for a very very long time or not regularly uh, I've had um, inspirational consultations with some uh, elite athletes uh, you know it's it's not very easy to to keep it up when you're traveling a lot and uh, mm -hmm. you know when you have a busy schedule as an elite athletes um, but it's uh, in my pers perspective it's very important it's very crucial to uh, to eat the right kind of foods when you want to op optimize your physical performance and mental performance you you can't forget that um, Sports is also about mental performance. You have to have a focus, 100% uh, focus from uh, minute one to, to the last minute in a game or uh, during a competition. So uh, both the mental and, and physical performance are crucial. Uh, when it comes to uh, recreational athletes, uh, we have a long tradition in Sweden of, uh, you know, 5K runs, 10K runs, uh, half marathons runs. Uh, we have the, the Vasa Loppet, a ski run, a 90 kilometer ski run. Uh, oh, yeah, in the northern it's part. Very, very, very short. <laughs> yeah, we don't have too many Englishmen uh, uh, joining that ski run, actually. No, no. So that should be uh, a that, challenge for you, Sam. Very... <laughs> yeah, I'd, 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 I'd give it a go because I, I don't know if you know, I used to be a snowboarder, so I'm very used ah, to okay. the cold. Um, cool. So I was a snowboard instructor for four years. Yeah. So I'm very much used to kind of living in the mountains and, and dealing with, uh, with with cold snaps, let's say. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, oh, cool. if, if, if... But if did, you, did you try it, cross country? Uh, no, not yet. That's something that I do want to try. And I, I think it's something that I'd actually be quite good at. Yeah, because um, I like the re re repetition of it, um, but also um, I think I've got the physicality of it. Big, strong legs and a and a strong upper body as well. Yeah, and that's especially when you do when you look at these uh, kind of uh, competitions. Um, uh, a, a low carb diet is perfect, you know, when yeah. when you try when you fuel your body on 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 fats. Absolutely, yeah. and you guys in Sweden kind of revolutionized. Uh, performance nutrition through a lot of the groundbreaking research in carb loading in, back in the 50s was it or the 60s yeah in, in the 60s yeah, yeah yeah it was at the university here in stockholm uh you know when the the technology came with a muscle biopsy when you could go into the muscle and analyze what's in the muscle mm -hmm. uh, they did a lot of uh, research studies in the 60s where they showed that uh, if you load your body with carbohydrates, you increase glycogen, the stored carbohydrates in the muscles, and that uh, extends the uh, um, endurance. So uh, that created the, the whole philosophy with uh, carbohydrate loadings uh, within the sports field. Uh, but that is, those studies, you, you know, you can, uh, you can say a lot about these uh, studies. Uh, they... Uh, you, you take something out from, from its context and you create a whole philosophy uh, that say that um, athletes should eat a lot of carbohydrates all the time. And uh, that's a wrong conclusion, but that's, that's the result uh, of it. So uh, basically, we messed a little bit up uh, when we draw conclusions from these uh, Swedish studies. So we, uh, we're, we're, uh, we have a res responsibility to, uh, uh, to balance the, the word. Fantastic. And, and what, what is that balance? Because obviously, over the past kind of 40 years, from that 50 years or even, um, the, the consensus and kind of you know, the conventional wisdom is that we should be you know, carb loading for every single training session and every single um, event as well, kind of constantly. Um, so, so what's the balance and what should have we learned from these studies originally? 
Well, in my point of view, um, carbohydrates and glycogen, uh, it's, it's crucial for, for performance, uh, but mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that athletes should eat uh, a lot of carbohydrates all the time. And um, the focus has been on the amount, uh, you know, to, to have uh, enough uh, energy through carbohydrates. And that has taken the focus out of uh, anything that has to do with quality. So uh, if, if you can lower the need, the body's need for carbohydrates, there's a huge of health benefits combined with that. And uh, carbohydrates is, is fuel. But you know, there, there's studies that show that, uh, that the stomach health, the gut flora, the gut health in many athletes uh, are really, really bad. And uh, you've actually had a study in, 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 um, in England where they looked at the, the dental health among the, the soccer players in the Premier League. And um, I think it was in, in West Ham where the medical staff actually said that the, the dental health in, in West Ham's uh, soccer team is worse than in the British uh, population in general. So a lot of sports drink with... Uh, high glycemic uh, carbohydrates it's fuel it's fuel for the body but it's uh, so bad for all other systems uh, in the body so if you could find strategies to lower the need of carbohydrates there's a huge of health benefits and you yeah and then there's uh, uh, you know uh, you can have the train low compete high strategy uh, if you have a uh, um, a schedule where you don't compete uh, too very often, you don't uh, train every day. You could have days where you go uh, lower in your uh, carbohydrate intake and you do a lot of training sessions uh, in a fasting state where you increase the amount of uh, mitochondria, where you learn your body to, to utilize uh, uh, fatty acids efficiently. And then when you're uh, in the competition, uh, when you want to do this half marathon run, you increase uh, the accessibility to uh, to glycogen. So uh, the aim is to um, to be there on the morning uh, in front of the race, and uh, you you want to have a body that is uh, an expert on on uh, uh, utilizing fatty acids and using the glycogen uh, parallelly. So uh, that would be the optimum. But then there's elite athletes uh, playing hockey, soccer that, you know, have uh, games uh, three times a week uh, and uh, training sessions around that. So there's no really time to, to go lower in carbohydrate intake. Uh, for those athletes, uh, I focus mainly on, on quality, uh, a lower amount generally, uh, but quality. And, um, you know, uh, um, bringing forward the uh, uh, focusing on on the fats as a fuel uh, and and the building health uh, when it comes to a paleo diet for these uh, these athletes so uh, if you want to individualize and optimize for for different kinds of athletes it's basically uh, a great need to analyze the the athlete the energy requirements how the training sessions uh, are scheduled the the competition schedule and uh, that makes it a, a really big field it can get pretty complicated to, and, and especially to uh, to get this uh, into the everyday life of the athletes absolutely because um with with every single sport comes its own um requirements essentially so you know you wouldn't necessarily have a golfer on the same diet as an ice hockey exactly player, um because they're they're different levels of intensity and when you are an athlete um even kind of a you know a recreational athlete that's doing a lot of training it's it's important to try and get that individualized approach to optimizing your own performance yeah um and so, for instance, let's, let's, let's take those two examples there of a golf player and, uh, and an ice hockey player. What would be the differences for you between those two? Well, the difference would be that the golf player uh, needs to be mentally focused uh, during uh, a couple of hours. And it's not very hard physically, uh, not compared to an ice hockey player at least, uh, 
-hmm. So uh, the, the golfer, uh, I've actually had one of the, the, the top female golfers in, in Sweden, and um, she's on a um, pretty strict low carbohydrate diet. And she takes uh, MCT oil with middle chain triglycerides. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, she, she has an intake of a pretty high amount of fats because she wants to be, uh, she wants the, the long lasting uh, concentration and, and focus. Uh, mm -hmm. The ice hockey player, uh, and uh, there's actually one team at, in the Swedish highest hockey league uh, that is on a paleo diet. And um, they do, uh, uh, you know, an ice hockey match, it's uh, three times 20 minutes, high intensity, uh, glycogen demands uh, of a high amount, and uh, they have a lot of training sessions during the, competitional, uh, the competition season. So uh, a strict low carbohydrate wouldn't work uh, at all. Yeah. Uh, but they, they uh, eat um, a paleo diet focusing on, on quality. Uh, always uh, uh, on quality in in every meal, and actually, um, the 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 medical staff around this team uh, have said uh, said to the the players that they're going to do bone broth every weekend, so they have bone broth during the weekend during right. the weeks. <laughs> and you know, I <laughs> I had a presentation uh, two weeks after the the health unplugged. Uh, in, in the southern part of Sweden, and there were a lot of uh, researchers there, and I, I presented this team and that they, they had bone broth to, <laughs> to heal the body and to, uh, to building long-lasting health. And they were not into this at all. And one really? of them questioned me, oh. actually, uh, how come uh, there's an advantage of having bone broth? Well. My answer was that it's, it's very healing for the gut. Uh, it supplies a lot of vitamins and minerals to the body. Well, I have not heard a single uh, sports physician recommend bone broth. And my answer was that this, the reason for that is that the physician, they uh, are not taught in their education about bone. They have no idea what it contains and what it does to the body. Yeah. So, uh, there's uh, a lot of, um, uh, you know, ideas, traditional ideas that you, uh, you come with that people have uh, difficulties with. Very much. Uh, so it's, it's a hot topic. There's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of resistance yeah. against kind of yeah. real food for some particular reason, even though one of the top sports scientists in the world, Professor Tim Noakes down in exactly. South Africa, is completely behind this. And he's, he's a guy to certainly reference to who would recommend bone broth for people, as well as uh, Dr. Peter Bruckner, um, who's the sports, um, who's the team doctor for the Australian cricket team yeah. as well. He's another yeah. guy that's really kind of, you know, um, implementing this approach. Um, and and more and more people are coming out of the woodwork as as time goes by. I um, mean, including the LA Lakers. I know um, yeah. uh, Tim De, De Francesco um, is is doing a lot of work in terms of implementing the paleo diet with those guys as much as you can, um, because as much as you know, you want your athletes to follow everything a hundred percent. They will verge off, and that's kind of life unfortunately yeah. um, so, so how how do you deal with that itself in terms of when you do when you are working with somebody um, and uh, you know they they are slipping up maybe too much how do you try and rein them back in yeah that, that's the hard thing to uh, to do and um, you know I've had um, as you um, uh, recreational athletes and you know people who want to lose lose uh, fats and, and gain muscle mass and so on it's easier when you can um, you, you can hold their hands during the transition phase and you know you, you meet them regularly and you can always get them back on track uh, the um, the elite athletes uh, they, they're harder because um, they're traveling uh, it's it's very difficult to have a uh, regularity or consistency in, in the nutritional uh, consultations. So um, I usually have them um, uh, at my work here in, in, in Stockholm. 
and I, I give them so uh, so much knowledge and inspiration as I can and uh, then for a, uh, a few weeks a few months they're on their own and some of them uh, are really into it and uh, they're prepared to uh, to do a lot of adjustments uh, regarding their uh, their training sessions regarding their um, uh, you know habits of where to find foods where to do the shopping and so on and uh, um, they're really good off uh, when when uh, they're uh, prepared to to do a lot of changes but then others they can uh, they accept uh, the whole paleo diet philosophy but they're not able to implement it in, in their ordinary life and especially when you have team players uh, teams are, are harder because you know, there's no uh, culture of uh, taking your own responsibility for your uh, your foods and your nutritional habits. Uh, you, you're you're so used that there's someone else telling you to, what to do. So if we can teach our team players to think and act as individual players, I, I think that would be very very beneficial. But that's a matter of you know culture sports culture and and uh yeah and so on yeah yeah it's it's difficult to get a whole team kind of you know eating the same thing if, if they're yeah. not on a campus 100 percent of the time yeah I mean, in, in, in the run-up to say um the rugby world cup for instance recently um you know they the month before they'd all be together basically for a month training day in day out um, on the same campus and so they'd all be uh, eating the same food at least at lunchtime and probably the breakfast as well maybe not the dinner um, but majority of the time they'd be eating eating all together and everything would be kind of strictly maintained but kind of on the off season particularly rugby players who you know are notorious for drinking lots and possibly yeah. <laughs> eating vast <laughs> quantities of food um, it's, uh, it's it's difficult to control yeah. that, but um, again, that's a, that's a fact of life, unfortunately, yeah. as well. Um, so, for for yourself, for instance, you, you mentioned earlier that you know a, um, train low, compete high is 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 a bit of a good approach. Is is that how you yourself um, eat and to eat to train and compete as well? Because I know that you you compete yourself. Yeah, I do um, track and fields, uh, the, the sprint distances, two, two and four hundred meters uh, run. Um, I haven't done it the, the last uh, month, though. I, I, I broke my arm uh, in, in February, so uh, I, I have di oh. did some uh, rehabilitation this, this year. Uh, but actually, I've, um, I've experimented a lot uh, and tried different strategies. And... Um, uh, the the really one of the the, the main bene, uh, benefits with a paleo diet or when you go into the low carb is that the body composition gets so much better you lose fat and you uh, that means that you you have a, a higher amount of or higher percentage of muscle uh, in regards to your body weight and that's a great benefit when you want to move your body when you want to run mm -hmm. uh, or in any way transport your body from point A to point B. So um, I, I actually tried to, uh, to be on a pretty strict low carbohydrate diet uh, doing uh, track and fields. And I could experience that it was great for the, the body composition. It was great for my health, uh, but I, I didn't have 100% um, explosivity yeah uh, so i i felt i i needed to add something i needed to adjust something uh, in my ordinary life and uh, in regards to the training and, and uh, competing competition sessions so um i actually added um uh, you know i've, I've tried everything <laughs> i've tried uh, creatine i've tried uh, coffee with a uh, high amount of coffee with caffeine uh, and uh, that was actually a very, very good thing to, to uh, have two, three of cups of coffees just 30, 45 minutes before a race. That was actually very, very good uh, for me, at least. Yeah, that's pretty well established as well. It's established, it? yeah. 
So, uh, you know, th there's um, a lot of people talking about um, uh, that uh, caffeine could actually compensate for a little, for, for, for the lack of fast carbohydrates when it comes to high intensity sports. And it, mm -hmm. it could work for some people. I've also tried to, to add some more carbohydrates uh, to, um, to some meals in the week. And uh, there's, in a way, there's a benefit of having uh, a little bit more of glycogen in, in, in your muscle because the, the tension in the muscles increases and that actually makes you a little bit stronger uh, yeah. when you have and a lot of... And more explosive as well. Yeah. Quite yeah, nice. when you have more glycogen, a little bit more water than you have on a strict uh, low carbohydrate diet. So mm -hmm. that is actually uh, beneficial. So a little bit uh, of uh, uh, carbohydrates uh, with a good timing, uh, mm -hmm. caffeine and creatine. Uh, and I found a, a very good balance uh, in regards to my own uh, everyday life when, when it comes to track and fields. Fantastic. So it's about trying to find the appropriate amounts of yeah. caffeine, carbohydrate, creatine. Yeah. Those three C's maybe you could brand that as, you know, the ca caffeine, creatine and carbohydrate, getting those levels yeah, the right. Three C's. And, and, and yeah, and getting that timing right with them all as well. Because if you if you have uh, your caffeine at three o'clock in the morning, and you know, you're going to be racing at three o'clock in the afternoon, that's not going to be particularly beneficial. So yeah. it's, it's, it's all in the timing and the same with the carbohydrate as well. Um, yeah. So it's all about the timing with those things. And, and with that in mind, um, you mentioned there that um, about 45 minutes before having a couple of cups of coffee um, would be sufficient to improve your performance when competing. Um, yes. But what, what about carbohydrate? When's, when's the best timing for that, do you find? Yeah, well... Um... <clears throat> well, it, it depends on sports, but I've um, uh, when I did the uh, experiments on, on myself, um, I had, um, you know, there's one carbohydrate source based on, um, uh, it's called super starch. I, I, you probably yeah, know what it is yeah, from, I've, from I've the heard States. Of it. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, it's it's heated and it's uh, somewhat uh, you know the the, mo the the glucose molecules are very very huge, mm -hmm. so the absorption time is very slow. Uh, so that's a way to um, to fuel your body with a little bit more glucose, but it doesn't affect insulin and other hormones as much. Uh, I tried that and um, uh, I find that more beneficial when it comes to long distance running and, and endurance mm -hmm. uh, at uh, sports. Uh, I tried to actually, um, the, the night before, uh, if, I, uh, if I had planned a, a race on um, uh, noon, uh, a Saturday, uh, on the Friday night, I actually uh, loaded my body with... Um, a few uh, potatoes, uh, rice, you know, gluten-free starches. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was actually beneficial. I, I, yeah, I found that positive, yeah. Because yeah, you, you gain a little bit more water, uh, the, the tension in the muscle increases, and that, uh, that is positive for strength and explosivity. Yeah. So, so when, you, when you're going, uh, doing a long, slow race, kind of endurance style, it'd be um, slow carb loading the night before yeah. a race at approximately noon the next day. But when it, when it comes to short and explosive things, so when you're doing a sprint, for instance, um, in track and field or, or even a ice hockey match, how, how does that compare? Well, when it comes to ice hockey, uh, I guess... Um, this ice hockey team in, in Sweden, they have, uh, they, they might eat, um, you know, uh, 30, 40 uh, energy percentage of, of carbohydrates mm -hmm. uh, in general. And then they have a uh, sports drink, uh, half an hour. Uh, that's about 40 grams of uh, fast carbohydrates, uh, yeah. 30 to 45 minutes before the game. And you know the absorption time in the in the gut is uh, one grams uh, per minute, uh, approximately. 
dep depends on it come whether it comes with fructose and or not sure. but approximately one grams per per minute and then you can actually count okay so if you have um one period in a hockey game 20 minutes uh and then that's that's basically 30 to 35 minutes uh, you know when the the efficient time it's 20 but it's a little bit longer so uh for 40 grams of fast high glycemic uh, carbohydrates uh, 30 to 45 minutes before the first period and then adding uh, between the first and second period and then also between the, the the second and the third but it also depends on the player i have coached uh, one of the the main um, the goalie uh, a swedish hockey player playing in the nhl and you know uh, he, does, he doesn't want to go into a blood sugar curve that goes up and down like this. No, no and he certainly doesn't need it. <laughs> he doesn't need it, no. So we worked with uh, his mental focus and his intake of carbohydrates was much lower than the other uh, players in the team. Yeah, that doesn't So, uh, yeah. Um, but that's, yeah, so, that's I, some, I, 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 some I, I, guidelines. I use, um, the, the, the carbohydrate content um, of an athlete's diet really depends on the um the intensity yeah of the exercise that they're undertaking yeah. but intensity you kind of recovery like the golfers the golfers where they're just walking all day and they need that mental focus all day long their carbohydrate um content is very low but then you've got ice hockey players and those actually um on the middle of the ice rather than the goalkeeper um, because they're they're very explosive for a full hour, even though they're kind of coming on and off uh, in the rolling substitution style that you have in yeah. ice hockey. Um, but it's still very very explosive all of the time, and so um, their carbohydrate content is going to be a little higher, and also they're going to be having a little more fast acting carbohydrate exactly. during that period. But that's carbohydrate. I see it as being it's it's, it's fueling physical. Act, like intense physical activity yeah essentially the rest of the time you want to be off on fatty acids yeah so, exactly you want to have it as a top fuel you know when yeah. you need it yeah yeah, yeah. that's the, that's the function of of carbohydrates that's right and if and if you kind of go over your glycogen stores i think that's that's when you start to fall into problems yeah as well so it's about being able to find out how how far you can take it before we start getting detrimental effects. And exactly. And it, and it takes a, a, a coach like yourself to kind of find that out with that athlete as yeah. well. Um, because it's, I, I think particularly in a, when you're an elite athlete, it's important to have somebody there um, kind of independently measuring everything as well. You know, recreational um, athletes, um, if you can afford it, sure. But then, you know, sometimes you need to just, just do it yourself a little yeah. bit but you know you can always benefit from an external point yeah. of view um, so. i can tell you another story if, if we have time uh, absolutely absolutely yeah, i coached um 18 year old uh, girl uh, who was doing uh, long jumps track and fields but her main uh, focus was long jump and um uh, she was um uh, she she was really putting a lot of effort in in becoming uh, as good as she could uh, and uh, uh, she had a pretty tight uh, schedule. So we worked with her uh, breakfast and with her lunch and um, uh, her, her dinner and uh, between the meal snacks and so on. And um, she was a sugar addict, you know, she had such sugar cravings. So uh, from a health point of view, uh, she was very, very well off with a strict logo low carbohydrate she felt good in her body her gut health was perfect but that was too low to fuel her body for her uh, for her sports mm -hmm. so we try to find that balance uh, of uh, what kind of carbohydrate sources could you add to her uh, meals without uh, you know getting the the cravings out of control and how much and uh, I actually met her in, in August two, um, I think it was, yeah, two years ago. And uh, uh, she got a nutritional plan. Uh, 
it wasn't too strict on the carbohydrates, uh, but still uh, in the low range. And uh, she wrote me an email a couple of weeks later that, um, you know, Jonas, um, um, I'm, I'm feeling great, uh, but at nighttime, I feel sick, you know, uh, I feel sick. I have this um, um, bump in my, in my stomach and uh, I, I can't really go to sleep. So uh, we analyzed her uh, schedule uh, once more and uh, I saw that she probably runs out of glycogen. Uh, when she does the training sessions. We, we started to analyze her training sessions more in, in detail. And she was, you know, she had two hour training sessions. That's very, very long. Yeah. So she ran out of glycogen. So we added some more um, fruits and honey into her protein shake in the uh, afternoons. And then she was well off. Uh, and she, she found her a balance. But that has also taught me two things. Uh, you know, everyone is uh, an individual. Uh, one schedule, uh, one method is not appropriate for the other person. And also uh, that, uh, you know, a, a lot of the, the young athletes, they have such sugar cravings uh, that you need to find the balance between health and performance. Uh, and that is sometimes very, very hard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it, it's quite interesting, actually, that you were talking about footballers earlier, um, because quite famously, there are a lot of um, retired footballers that as soon as they, you know, as soon as they retire and they become commentators on the TV, they put on a lot of weight yeah. very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's because that's a reflection of the dental hygiene that obviously they're eating a lot of carbohydrates all of the time. And because they're training so much and playing so much football, um, they're, they're purely burning through that. And then when they retire, they continue that yeah. style of diet. And that's when they pile on the pounds. Yeah, obviously. yeah that's detrimental and, to him. And, and so what's, what's important as a sports coach is to teach um, players, particularly the, the, the young players, um, about how to, um, you know, tailor their their diets for their lifestyle yeah. at the time as well yeah. and, and make them understand how their body actually works. And so when they do come to retire, um, they're, they're in a healthy state. Um, and then also, yeah, they're going to continue to maintain a healthy state as well because a lot of athletes, you know, as soon as they retire, then, you know, they blow yeah. up. And you see it in boxers. Yeah. during their careers actually ricky hatton being probably the most prime example and um, yeah. i think he's featherweight or middleweight can't remember um but like when he goes off season he balloons like yeah. there's no tomorrow and then you know you see him a year later and he's back down to like 150 pounds and ready to fight and everything and you know him going up and down like that just isn't yeah. healthy yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. We see that in, in Sweden as well. I guess that's a worldwide uh, phenomenon. But also one thing that I find interesting is that some, some elite athletes and recreational athletes that, that put a lot of effort into uh, to performance, if they want to do half marathons and marathons and so on, they, a lot of them would be good off with uh, exercising a little bit less uh, and actually in, in, in that perspective be able to have a, a, a better um, diet uh, instead of just try to maximum the the amounts of hours of training because that requires so much fuel so that you can't uh, you can't have a paleo diet as a uh, as a platform so uh, a lot of them would be very good off at actually um, training less and focus and, and, and tra training, training, yeah, training more smartly and, and higher yeah. quality. Training, eat more smartly. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. And I think that's a good good place to to, uh, to finish our discussion on this. It's been absolutely fascinating, Jonas. Um, much appreciate your time. Um, and uh, just to remind the folks at home, go check out Jonas's website at jonasberkfist.se and in about a week's time, go to paleoinstitute.se and if you want to follow him on Twitter, you can follow him at 
mf underscore jonas that's mf underscore j o n a s um, and um yeah um, i'm very much looking forward to to, to seeing the paleo institute um see, seeing how that blossoms and then that just leaves us one more thing to do and that's to hear a smash it out from Jonas Berkfist all the way in Sweden. <laughs> so on the count of three, Jonas, I want you to shout, smash it out to the camera. One, two, three. Smash it out. Yes, awesome. <laughs> cool, all right, guys, go check out uh, Jonas Berkfist um, at jonasberkfist.se. Um, and otherwise, Jonas, I'll, uh, I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Nice to have you. Absolutely. Nice to talk to you, Sam. Great. Absolutely. Very much. See you soon, mate. Bye.